Hello, everyone. We are ready to get started. My name is Caitlin Edwards, and I'm the Community Events Manager at Linux Professional Institute. Thank you for joining us today for our Ask Me Anything LPI Membership Edition webinar. For those of you new to Linux Professional Institute, our mission is to promote the use of open source by supporting the people who work within it. LPI is the global certification standard and career support organization for open source professionals. With more than 200,000 certification holders, we are the world's first and largest vendor neutral Linux and open source certification body. We have certified professionals in over 180 countries, deliver exams in multiple languages, and have hundreds of training partners. We have gathered your questions over the past few weeks and created a presentation that will give you an overview of the why, how, who, what, when, and where of LPI membership. So thank you so much for your submissions. During the webinar, we are still encouraging questions, so feel free to submit your questions using the Q&A or the chat box at the bottom of your screen, submitting questions publicly or privately. I will keep track and facilitate throughout the webinar. Please also note that in the chat box, you're able to switch between chatting with panelists only or choosing to chat with everyone. This webinar is being recorded and the slides and recording will be sent out to everyone later this week. <clears throat> Today's webinar will be led by Matthew Rice. Matthew Rice is the Executive Director of Linux Professional Institute. Prior to his executive role, he held the position of Director of Certification Development. Matthew is a licensed engineer in Canada in the fields of geophysics and software development and received his LPIC-1 in 2002. On that note, Matt, please take it away. Oh, I believe you are muted there. Yes, I am. Thanks, Caitlin. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the, to the membership program, Ask Me Anything. Uh, I can't see the attendees right now, but if there's any current members, uh, here as well. Thanks for joining too. Uh, well, a little bit more about myself. Uh, I've been using Linux professionally uh, since 1994. Uh, Igrisol was my first distribution, uh, mostly as a software developer in C and some Fortran and later on some other fun languages. Um, and in addition to what Caitlin already mentioned, I did become a member in 2020. Uh, my LPIC one had uh, gone inactive, so um, I had to use the, the second program for getting uh, membership here, um, but I'll cover that later as well. So uh, in this webinar, I'll cover, you know, basically why LPI has this membership program, uh, who's eligible for it, and how you can become and stay a member. A uh, little more details about the, the program um, and when and where people can, can join if they want to become a member. Uh, I should point out at the beginning of this, although the membership program allows certification holders to extend and maintain their, their certifications, the, the original way of going up a level uh, or retaking the highest level you've achieved is, is still there. People can still use that if, if their main interest is maintaining their credentials. All right. So why is uh, this program here? Well, over the last couple of years, the, the board has changed the, the governance model a little, um, uh, which meant some bylaw changes. There's a new definition of what a member is. Uh, their hope is that uh, as some of us age, this will help create a more stable organization uh, where governance is helped uh, to be maintained by the certification holders. Uh, this was the original intent for the organization. Uh, it's just that uh, when LPI started, there weren't any certification holders, so they had to bootstrap the, the board. Uh, this fits in with our mission still, which is uh, to support the people that are using open source and to promote open source in general uh, worldwide. Uh, with this change in the definition of a member, we had to create a, a membership program. Uh, it could have been a simple one of just hold up your hand, um, but the board thought it was also a good opportunity uh, to let professionals demonstrate that they're not only certified and have met some minimum uh, level of uh, skills, but also that they've gone beyond that um, and continue to grow as a professional. So who can join? 
anyone that's holding one of these certifications from us. So LPIC one or higher, uh, or some of the open technology uh, or the open technology certifications, the BSD and the DevOps tools engineer. Uh, if your certifications are inactive, um, you can request reactivation for the purpose of joining, which I'll, I'll demonstrate later. Um, and that's uh, a program that's been made because there are so many people that have, you know, become certified, um, either, you know, achieved the highest level that he wanted or got to the top with the LPIC threes, um, you know, and then just went off elsewhere. Um, they never had the opportunity to become members. So that's, that's why this opportunity is there. Um, it may go away at some point in time. There isn't any discussion of that, but it may be a limited time offer for inactive certification holders. The other thing is the membership is only for individuals. There's no corporate members. Um, LPI is not becoming a trade association or anything. It uh, still is focused on individuals and individual skills. Over the last 20 years, uh, we've certified almost 200,000 people. Um, so we are just preparing uh, a mail out to most of them to let them know that this uh, program is available uh, if they're interested. Uh, we'll be doing it slowly um, over, the, over this quarter, I guess. And here's a bit of a heat map of where most of our certification holders are. Um, we have some work to do in a couple of continents, but overall, um, you know, we're fairly well represented. There's only a few countries in the world that don't have any certification holders from Linux Professional Institute. All right. So how can someone join? Uh, you have to meet the requirements. So anyone with an active certification, uh, you'll have to agree to the membership terms which if you're getting a copy of this presentation, you can click on here uh, or just go to lpi.org slash member to get started. There is the code of conduct and professional ethics you have to agree to as well. And then there are some dues. Um, the, uh, the plan is to make the dues uh, incomparable to the benefit that you'll be getting as a member. But uh, part of that's having members help us do that. So um, we have a member engagement committee which I'll mention later as well, uh, which members can join. Uh, it's open to all of them right now. Um, if it gets too large, we might have to do something about it. For anyone with an inactive certification, you still have to meet the above requirements, but you also have to demonstrate that you've been using uh, these skills that um, you've been certified in. This is done through a professional development unit system, um, and it's, it's not very onerous. As part of the membership program, because you have to have an active certification in order to be a member, becoming a member will extend that certification for the duration of your membership. Um, there's some more details coming up, but if, if you want to read ahead, um, you, can, you can look at these links at the bottom of the slide and get some more of the, the details. There are quite a few. So what is a professional development unit? Um, some other organizations call them uh, continuing education units, but ours are a little more broad. They, they don't just cover continuing education, but professional use of uh, these skills and credentials, as well as community involvement. So a PDU claim is basically a request for recognition of an accomplishment. Uh, it's basically a point system. Uh, any claim can be for anywhere from one to 25 PDUs. And in order to join, uh, which is covered in the next slide, um, a new uh, inactive certification holders have to submit 20 PDUs. Uh, or not 20 PDU claims, but some the number of claims worth up to 20 PDUs. And they can be in any category. Um, this balance here seemed to be a good uh, balance between the continuing education and the professional use. And as well for people that don't have the opportunity to participate in the community um, or just prefer not to, uh, it's not a requirement uh, to maintain 
uh, membership. The biggest question we get is when do people have to submit PDUs? Um, if you have an active certification in order to join, you don't need any PDUs. You don't have to submit any. Uh, as well, during the membership, you don't have to submit any PDUs as well. It's only if you want to continue the membership past that three-year cycle. At that point, you have to demonstrate that you've been using these credentials and then you can continue your membership and that will also extend your certifications for additional term. For and if you want to join and you only have inactive certifications, this is where you do have to submit some PDUs before joining. Uh, it's one third of the three year cycle, so 20 PDUs and only claims that are for the period 12 months prior to your request to join count. So things that you've done in the 2000s, don't enter those, there, some people do, um, but they won't count towards um, any of these cycles, um, either for joining or for continuing membership. And there are a list of not only the categories, but subcategories of areas, you know, from, you know, reading or writing books to mentoring and training um, and using using your skills at work or with with other organizations as a volunteer uh, and, and a few other things. Um, this might be a good time if there's any questions up until now. I haven't been able to keep an eye on the chat. Um, but Caitlin, are there any questions yet? No, no questions have come in yet. All right. Then I'll continue. All right. So what sort of things are going to be going on as part of this membership? Uh, program, well, the governance change. Uh, one of the big ones, uh, which some people are excited about, but um, as people know from elections, never get 100% participation. Um, there are board elections coming up in 2021. There's also a nomination committee. Um, and it's, uh, its purpose is to help find potential uh, board members. Uh, there have been some announcements of this going on, and I think there's um, actually a webinar about this process coming up, I think, this week or today. Yes, today at yeah. uh, noon Eastern. Yeah, and there's also a couple of previous ones up on uh, lpi.org slash webinars uh, for anyone that's interested. Uh, you don't have to be a member to join uh, the board. Um, but there is a process for members that want to be on the board to ask uh, for special consideration to get on a ballot. Um, but I'd say go, go see those webinars if you're interested in this stuff. Uh, there's also an annual general meeting. It'll be held sometime in the first half of the year. And during that time, uh, there'll be an annual report with audited financials, um, you know, members can ask questions to the board. The, the confirmation and final tally of the board elections will be done there and presented. Um, probably get to meet new board members and you know other things that uh, members might want to discuss. There's also a number of community programs that have been created, um, particularly for members that do want to get involved in things. Uh, there's an opportunity to help create the exams uh, and update them, uh, work on learning materials, whether it's translation or new content, uh, participating at events, and also, you know, just writing articles uh, for some of the blogs and, and sites we, we support. Uh, there's also committees, uh, both uh, member specific ones and ones that are open to partners and educators, um, which you may be interested in. And uh, there were plans for some physical meetups as well, but those are being revisited to see what is actually feasible for 2021. All right. And there's some other services that are uh, slowly be being brought online. Uh, you can see a lot of betas there. Uh, there is an approved trainer program. Um, should be out by Christmas, I think, I hope. Uh, where it's a member only service, um, but basically where we'll help recognize 
uh, members of ours that are professional trainers. Um, as well, a lot of partners have been asking us to somehow uh, let members and just certification holders know that uh, they're trying to fill some vacancies at their at their office. Um, so that's launching in 2021 as well. And a number of other programs. Uh, it seems marketing wise, uh, being such a large community, uh, there are vendors that are interested in having us take a look at their products um, and are willing to offer discounts and, and freebies for it. So those would be available as well. Uh, for anyone that can't see the URL, actually, I think it's been blocked out. Uh, the URL for this portal that you're seeing here is people.lpi.org. Um, you still have to register where you did for your LPI ID, but you can use those same credentials to log into that portal. Uh, not only will it show you your certifications, um, but it'll get you access to the membership program and uh, other programs as they come online. Hmm. The other thing members get is a welcome letter with a membership card. Uh, we've come into the 21st century and we've put a QR code on there that'll be a link uh, to uh, for people if they want to ever verify uh, your membership and certification status. Uh, as well, uh, you'll see printed on the back of your membership card which certifications you have. Uh, some people carry around all of them. Um, this might help shrink the wallet a little bit. The other thing we include, and this is something we've learned through mailing sort of a full letter and uh, size certifications out around the world is uh, they get damaged very easily. So what we've done in this case is created a gold foil sticker, uh, which fits in the, in the member uh, welcome kit, which if you want to, you can go into that portal and download a PDF of your certificate for membership and print that out uh, and affix the, the foil seal if you want. All right, so more on the portal. This is where you would go if you want to uh, take a look at membership options. Uh, again, you still do have to register at lpi.org slash register uh, to get your LPI ID, but once you have that, you can log in here. Uh, this is a, an old one, doesn't show as many beta stuff, but you'll see a, a, a image up here or a series of images that show your progression through the steps to becoming a member. Uh, in this case, for me, I was inactive, which is why the black one here is highlighted, well, done, and the 20 PDUs part is presented to me. Uh, for anyone with an active certification, you'd be going through this top track, but you still then have to agree to the um, membership agreement, make the request, uh, wait for uh, the application to be reviewed, and then uh, once you pay the dues, you'll become a full member. This is what a summary of PDUs look like once you've started submitting them. So you can see the state that they're at in. Um, there is a percentage of them that go in for uh, review. Um, standard industry practice seems to be about 10 to 20 percent. Right now we're reviewing all of them. Um, but uh, in once things are going more steadily, uh, it'll be a smaller percentage and you might be asked for some some supporting material for the claim that you're making, uh, whether it's a URL to to the work that you did. Um, or your participation in the community, or perhaps a, a scan of a certification or something like that. If you want to see the categories, it's this link here that's just PDU uh, on the left navigation bar. And you can see that they're broken up into both learning and teaching for the education side. And if you scroll down, you'll see the community and volunteering ones, as well as the employment ones. I could do a live demo during the Q&A if people want to see that as well. Uh, if you are asked for some supporting material, oh, sorry, this is just a, a first claim. Uh, put in the description, uh, a short title as well. Uh, if you want to preempt the review, you can add some supporting material as well. It's not required. 
uh, and then pick the date when you uh, achieve this um, accomplishment and then how many of them it was. Uh, sometimes it's just a single one like a topic, but it could be a number of days at a conference or a number of days in, a, in a, uh, some training, or you might even want to just submit all three years of your work experience in one, in one shot. If you have active certifications or you've submitted the 20 PDUs, when you click on uh, membership plans, you will be presented with the membership agreement with links to the policies and bylaws code of conduct. Um, once you click accept, you can then pick a one or a three year term. Uh, and then it goes off to, to the folks that are confirming uh, everything and, and then you should receive an email uh, with your acceptance. Uh, one thing I should note is uh, if your certification is valid for that entire three year period um, and beyond, you don't actually have to submit any PDUs to get into that second three year cycle. Um, but if your membership is due during that three year period, you would have to, um, to in, again, to continue the membership. Uh, select which term you want. Uh, as well, we just like the exams, we do prorate the dues. You're seeing the dues here for the very high indexed, uh, human development indexed uh, countries, like Canada, the US, uh, most of Europe. Um, whatever country you use for your, um, your mailing address, that's the, and your residence, that's, that's the country that we use. And then you'll, see something. Matt, sorry yeah. to interrupt. Um, there does look like to be a discount for the three year uh, term as well, right? Yes, that's looks correct. like a $15 discount. Okay. It's, yeah, I think it was 25, 30% or something like that. Yeah. So. All right. Oh, well, that was it. Um, uh, I, you'll, you'll get an email after the, the acceptance. Um, right now, I don't think there's anything in the portal that does it. So um, you might wanna make sure um, you're accepting emails from, I think it's catchall at lpi.org, uh, C-A-T-C-H-A-L-L at lpi.org. Um, or just write this all over, yeah, yeah don't do that. Um, but yeah, uh, there are a lot of, there's a lot of work being done on the portal. So you'll see it, uh, new things coming up there and uh, more information and functionality uh, over time. Uh, but if you ever have any uh, questions, you're always welcome to email membership at lpi.org uh, or info at lpi.org as well. Uh, and either, either one of those email addresses will get you some help. All right, for some reason, my voice is giving out. So I'll just end that on um, an offer to do a live demo on the, of the portal if anyone's interested. Um, but as well, if uh, any members are listening or you join uh, within the next hour, uh, we do have a member engagement committee meeting starting in two hours, uh, but there's also one coming near the end of January that people are welcome to join. Uh, as well, uh, you can look for details of this on discuss.lpi.org. Um, it's a separate registration, um, but uh, everyone's welcome there. All right, I guess I'll leave it to you, Caitlin, uh, or some questions. That's great. Thanks, Matt. Um, no new questions um, have come in, but did you want to um, go over the mm. couple questions that uh, were submitted earlier? I can. Uh, I'll leave presentation mode, though. So the, yeah, the two last minute questions that came in, uh, submitting bugs or patches to an open source project. Um, sounds technical, but it's actually under community, uh, under contributing to an open source project. So code, documentation, testing, advocacy, all of these would count under, under that category. Uh, the, Second part of that question was how many PDUs? The general rule is a PDU is around one hour of effort. Um, the employment ones are a little, 
a bit of an exception um, for obvious reasons. So it's, that's more a general rule for the, the education and the, and the community side. So it's, it's really, I'd leave it uh, up to your discretion. But the other thing is that participation is, you know, it's for the number of years active with that group. Um, otherwise, it, it, as it says here, it could get into micromanagement. Uh, that's not the intent of the program. It's, it's basically just a modicum of demonstration that you're actually using these skills or improving them. Uh, the other thing to note is there are category limits. So uh, not only does each subcategory have a limit, so for instance, three years um, of participating in other associations would be 15 PDUs. Um, you could then go get five PDUs from other community activities, um, but only up to 20 of them would be considered for that three-year cycle. All right. And there is a summary as you go, if you click on the PDUs in the portal, uh, you can see how you're doing. The ones in red are just ones that haven't met the minimum yet. So I better go get a job. And the, the other question was, um, do non-LPI certifications count uh, towards PDUs? Yes, they do. Um, both badges and micro credentials and full-blown you know, hard to get certifications. Uh, there's a table here. Uh, there is no um, limit to how many you can claim. Um, so you could do a lot of your education part just by going and get other certifications. So the assumption there is you had to do a lot of preparation for that uh, and study. So um, it was showing you achieving that certification. Um, yeah, I think, and that was it for those questions. Um, actually, in the chat, if there's any others. Okay, great. Um, no other questions have come in. If anyone does have any last minute questions, please feel free to add them into the chat or the Q&A box here. Um, again, the, this webinar is being recorded and we'll share, um, share it out with, uh, with everyone afterwards later this week. I'll give a couple more. It doesn't look like to be any more questions. Well, thank you very much, Matt. A lot of fantastic yeah. information. And so thanks uh, for walking us through the, um, the membership program. And thanks for everyone for joining us. Um, so if there are any additional questions, uh, like I mentioned, uh, please follow up with the, uh, the email that I send out with myself. Um, and I can put you in touch with, the, with Matt um, and get your questions answered. And again, the presentation slides and recording I will be sent out. So thank you so much for uh, for your engagement, your participation, and have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone.